going to use the nutritional report rep uh, approach. They're not going to use the nutritional approach. They're going to use arthroscopic surgery of the knee because that's worth $1.5 billion to them. And so you have to be smart enough. When your doctor says, look, you've got bone-to-bone -bone arthritis of your knee. In the old days, we'd have to go right to the joint replacement surgery. But right now, we've got arthroscopic surgery of the knee, and we can take out those little floating bits of, of bone and cartilage. And then when that doesn't work anymore, we'll eventually have to go to the joint replacement surgery. But right now, we might be able to preserve your knee for a year or two. You have to be strong enough to say, look, doc, you're a quack. How many people did you kill last month? Journal, uh, the New England Journal of Medicine, the New England Journal of Medicine, July 2002, said this procedure is worthless. Now, we've been friends for a long time. We belong to the same church, and you're coming to me with a worthless procedure. I don't think I'm going to visit you anymore. You have to rebel sometime. When they keep taking advantage of you to milk your insurance policy and milk your wallet, when do you rebel? You rebel when you realize that your doctor is only looking at you as a source of income. If you follow your doctor's advice when you have osteoporosis and arthritis, you're going to wind up like this. Yahoo! <laughs> now, whether you believe it or not, whether you believe it or not, how many of you have ever heard that osteoporosis is primarily a postmenopausal woman's problem? Whether you believe it or not, how many of you have heard that? Sure, everybody knows. Oprah, your doctor, the government, everybody knows that osteoporosis is primarily a uh, postmenopausal woman's problem. Well, we knew a hundred years ago that osteoporosis actually occurred equally in both men and women. It only became a postmenopausal woman's problem in 1958 when they came out with HRT. Because can you justify treating osteoporosis and preventing osteoporosis with estrogen if both men and women get it at the same rate? No, you couldn't. Can you imagine a red blooded American man, a red blooded Idahoan? Going to his doctor and say, okay, doc, I, I've got that osteoporosis stuff. I want you to shoot me up with that estrogen. <laughs> I've had estrogen today. They're not going to do it. They're just not going to do it. People tend to be basically smart, right? Well, this came out in November of 2001. Osteoporosis strikes both sexes equally. Men are as likely as women to suffer from osteoporosis. The surprise findings, well, why was this a surprise finding? Well, because all the doctors who did that study only graduated after the 1958 time period, and the truth they were taught was that osteoporosis occurs primarily in postmenopausal women. The results turn the tables on the belief that women are the prime victims of the condition. The findings of the Canadian Multicenter Osteoporosis Study, a program involving almost 10,000 participants in nine centers, will almost certainly change the way that medical professionals deal with unexplained bone fractures in men and the way education about the condition is handled. Now, raise your hand, gentlemen, if you have received a direct communication from your medical doctor, either an email, a postcard, a phone call, saying, look, come on in. I've just learned that osteoporosis occurs equally in both men and women. I'm so excited about this because I can help you before something bad happens. Come on in. We'll do a bone density test. How many of you men have gotten that communication from your medical doctors? Look at that. None. As I traveled around the world, 18 countries in the last three years, not a single man has raised their hand. Now you say, well, why would that be? Why wouldn't doctors want to tell their men patients? Uh, you'd think they'd be excited. If they're altruistic and they're out there to help you, they'd be wanting to give you this information, right? Well, guess what would happen? Every woman would immediately stop using HRT. And they're making so much money from the kickbacks and writing the prescriptions from HRT, they're afraid to rock the boat. They don't want to start anything that's going to rock the boat. So any doctor who today continues to write prescriptions for women for HRT should be put in jail for 25 years of life without possibility of parole. And that would be the kindest of treatments that I would figure for them. Ladies, when your doctor comes to you and says, I want you to take estrogen and osteo for osteoporosis, you can say, Doc, you take it for 25 years. And then if it works, I'll take it. <laughs> See what he says. One of the other things you have to do besides taking all the raw materials to rebuild your bone and cartilage and ligaments and tendons and connective tissue is to give up carbonated drinks. Carbonated drinks are the single greatest contributor to osteoporosis and arthritis and fractures of the bone. They interfere with the absorption of nutrients, especially minerals, digesting protein. This actually, the original study was done 10 years before this um, at the Harvard Nurses Health Study, 90,000 nurses, 20 years of data, and these were all nurses over age 35. They found out that the nurses drinking carbonated drinks, soft drinks, even diet drinks, instead of water during the day, had a 500% increase in risk of osteoporosis and fractures over the water drinking group. 
So they went and did the study in junior high school girls, 460 junior high school girls in ninth and 10th grade. They found out that the same thing was exactly true for them. Why did they only look at nurses and girls? Because they believed it was primarily a woman's disease. But believe me, it occurs in boys too. So if you have young athletes, whether they're girls or boys, if you have osteoporosis in your family or arthritis, if you have it or don't want to get it, you've got to give up carbonated drinks. Doctors should be telling you this every time you walk in the door. You've got to give up carbonated drinks. Um, I'll answer questions in just a moment. I just want to remind you that if you don't take care of your own destiny, if you don't take hold of things and, and take control of your own destiny, life is going to take care of your destiny for you, and usually it's not very nice. And so if you take control and rebel a little bit, be one of those mean, feisty little people that defy their doctor, but you have to do it with education. You just can't, just can't do something bad. You have to know what you're doing, educate yourself, and the odds are you're going to save yourselves an enormous amount of unnecessary misery. You're going to save yourselves a gob of money, and you're going to add many, many, many healthful years to your life. It will definitely help you to educate yourself. Education is power. Education with action is superpower. Don't let somebody else, even a doctor, determine your future. You've got to make those determinations yourself.